This is In Season and Out of Season, a Bible teaching ministry with Father Tom DiLorenzo. Good day. The name of the telecast is In Season and Out of Season, and I'm Father Tom DiLorenzo from Holy Rosary in Winthrop. I'm starting with the fourth chapter of St. Luke. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, this is after his baptism and after his temptation, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. So we heard that last week. Now we're going to continue. When Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee and a report spread about him through all the surrounding country, he began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. But I tell you, he wasn't praised by the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes. He wasn't praised by them. They were jealous of him. Why? Because he had authority. He could speak to the sickness, and the sickness would be healed. Jesus had authority. Let me tell you a secret. He gave that authority to the church. Whether we use it or not is another issue. Just the other day was the day of prayer all over the world all over the world for the sick. At the end of Mass, at the end of the homily, we prayed for the sick because it was the day of prayer for the sick, and we saw people healed. You know who does the healing? His name is Jesus. He works through people, but he does the healing. He's the one that does the healing. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, this is where he was brought up, his neighborhood, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he's talking about himself, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free to proclaim a year of jubilee of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. Let me tell you where he sat down. In the synagogue, there's a seat for the Messiah. He sat down in the seat of the Messiah. So all the eyes are going to be on him. He sits down on the seat of the Messiah. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and let the oppressed go free. This has been fulfilled in your, in your life today. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All who spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth, they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things you did in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up for three years and a half and there was a severe famine over all the land that Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow of Zarephath not a Jew a Gentile there were also many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian not a Jew a Gentile they're going to get very angry. They're going to get very angry with him. When they heard all this in the synagogue, they were filled with rage.
and drove him out of the town and led him up to the brow of the hill on which their town was built that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Why are they so angry? He's saying that he came unto his own, his own Jewish people, and his own people were not going to receive him. And it's going to be that way again. The Gentiles will receive him. Land of Zebulun, land of Nephtali, the people that walked in darkness, the Gentiles have seen a great light. He went down to Capernaum to a city of Galilee and was teaching them in the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching because he spoke with authority. He had authority. He spoke with authority. He cast out demons by a word. Let's continue. In the synagogue, there was a man who had an unclean spirit. And he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone! What have we to do with what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. I tell you, the demons know Jesus better than the apostles. He is their enemy. Let's see what Jesus does. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Shut up, be silent, come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down before them, he came out of him without having him uh, have any harm. They were all amazed and kept saying to one another, What kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him spread uh, to reach the place in the re many regions. You know, as I said, the devil knows who Jesus is, but he doesn't want to have his name spread by the devil. He wants his name to be spread by believers. Do you spread the name of Jesus to people? Is he your Lord and Savior? Do you talk about him? Do you tell people what he's done for you? Oh, we are the ones who spread the name of Jesus not the demons. He called the demons to shut up and he cast out the demon. After leaving the synagogue, he entered Simon's house. This was his house too. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked him about her. Then he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her immediately. And immediately she got up and began to serve them. This is, this is miraculous. The mother-in-law of Simon is sick with the high fever. It would cause death. No penicillin. Jesus takes her by the hand, rebukes the fever, and she begins to serve them the chicken soup. As the sun was setting, all those who, had, who were sick with various kinds of diseases, brought them to Jesus. And he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Messiah. The demons know he's the Messiah. The apostles still don't know yet. Very interesting. There were only two people that Jesus shared that he was the Messiah in John's Gospel. The woman at the well, I who am speaking to you, I am he, and the man born blind in the ninth chapter of John. I who am speaking to you, I am the Messiah. He let the rest of the countryside find out for themselves. But for these two people that were people that no one loved, he told them, that he was the Messiah. What's another word for Messiah? Christ, the, the anointed one. At daybreak, he departed and went into a deserted place. And what do you think he's going to do in the deserted place? He's going to pray. And the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim 
the gospel of the kingdom of God in other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. Chapter 5. I love this chapter. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Galilee or Genezareth, there was a crowd pressing in on him. Why? They want to touch him. They want to be healed. There's a crowd pressing in on him or they, to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. He uses the boat as a pulpit. And you know, the mountains are all around the Sea of Galilee. It was beautiful acoustics that people would be able to hear. Jesus spoke the word of God before he healed people. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night long, but have caught nothing. This sounds like so many people in the church. We've worked hard all night long and but little to show for it. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. But Peter, not believing that he was going to have a catch. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners and the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that had been taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they had brought their nets to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. You see? Peter's thinking that this guy is a carpenter. How does he know anything about fishing? Put out to the deep and let your nets down. Master, we've been out all night and have caught nothing. But at your word, I'll do it. I'll amuse you. Peter never thought anything was going to happen. But the fish were so many that they were breaking the nets. And Peter knows he's a sinner. And he comes to Jesus and says, I'm not worthy. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, from now on, Peter, or Simon, you're going to be catching men, catching women. You're going to be catching people. They left their nets and followed Jesus. Once when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I do choose be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to tell no one. Leprosy was more than a disease. It caused the person who was leprous to be not part of the community. They had to be in a camp all by themselves outside the city. If they were walking, they had to start crawling out unclean, unclean. Some of them carried bells because this this leprosy was very contagious. Today there are still lepers, but we have antibiotics that help them, that cure them. There are lepers in the world. We have antibiotics that, that cure them. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest. And as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for a testimony to them. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. Jesus came as God and man 
And he needs to pray to the Father. He needs to pray to the Father. He has communion with the Father, a oneness with the Father. One day as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. And they had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. I tell you, these are the kind of friends to have that they bring people to Jesus. This guy was paralyzed for years and years and years. They could not come into the door because the people were crowded at the door. So what do they do? They climb up to the roof, take the tiles off, and lower the man down uh, before Jesus. This is a friend. These four men are friends of this guy. Do you have friends that bring you to Jesus? Keep them. Do you have friends that lead you away from Jesus? Dump them. Dump them. When he saw their faith, he said, whose faith? The faith of the four men. Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say stand up and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take up your bed, and go home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his own home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God. And they were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. You see, Jesus did not speak like the Pharisees. Jesus spoke with authority. The Call of Levi. After he went out and saw the tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax booth, he said to him, follow me. Levi got up, or Matthew got up, left everything, and followed Jesus. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table. All these sinners, Jesus is having a party. Uh, oh, what do you think he's going to do with all these tax collectors and sinners? Go and preach. Maybe he says the prodigal son at this time. Oh, yes, he wants these people. These are the people that walked in darkness. Now they've seen a great light in Christ. A large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors? and sinners. Jesus answered, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's you and me. He came after us. And how did he come after us? By his death, burial, and resurrection. Do you believe that he died for you? We're going to be putting ashes on people's heads saying, turn away from your sins and believe that Jesus Christ died for you. Do you believe that? That if you were the only one, he would have gone to the cross just for you? Then they said to him, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, 
but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, you cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is still with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. That's Jesus. And then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and sews it on an old garment. Otherwise, the new will be torn and the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and they will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine desires new wine, but says the old is good. Let me tell you about this. You cannot put the law into the wineskin of grace. We need the grace of God. That grace is poured out upon us through the power of his death and resurrection. How we need the grace of God. Grace cannot be poured into the wineskins of the law. No. It must be poured into the wineskins of Jesus. Oh yes, grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Question about the Sabbath. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain field, his disciples plucked some of the heads of grain, rubbed them with their hands, and ate them. This was on the Sabbath. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is only lawful for the priest to eat. And he gave some of to his companions. Then he said to the companions, then he said to them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. I'm going to tell you that's going to make them very angry. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught there. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. There was a man whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against Jesus. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy life? After looking around at all of them, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored. But they were all filled with fury and disgust with one another, what they might do to Jesus. They should be having a party rather than wanting to kill him. He broke the Sabbath law. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. They didn't know that. The only thing they saw was the law. But grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses. But grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done unto you, unto me, according to your word. And at that moment, the word of God made flesh, leapt into the womb, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. During the first Friday of March, we are having uh, part of the 40 days of prayer. Adoration will be all night long. It's a Friday. It's the first Friday in March. You are invited. And may God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This has been In Season and Out of Season with Father Tom DiLorenzo. And remember that this ministry is supported only by the donations of listeners. So please help as the Lord leads you. Father Tom DiLorenzo, P.O. Box 602, East Boston, Mass., 02128 in season and out of season. Oh.